what's good? If you stumbled on this video, your life's about to change. Congratulations. Look, I'm limitless and it's time you realize you are too. Today, I want to tell anybody that's out there that hasn't dunked yet, you can dunk and this video is for anybody, whether you can touch the rim at all or not, whether you're grabbing rim, close to dunking, wherever you are, I don't care what age you are, you can dunk and I 100% believe that. So let's get started. I want to teach you how to do it and I want to get you started right now and I want you to do it in the right way. You will in the world. Jump so hard, they telling me it's my genetics. Push my body, find myself, remove my limits. Percent, anything's possible, that is a rep. Go for an hour, go live with regret. Stop the search. The question is really, how hard are you willing to work? Quick backstory on me. I could not touch the rim when I started. You can go back to my start day video. I was barely touching the rim. That rim was 9, 10.5. Yes, I remember to the half an inch, but that, still, I barely got that. I, I showed my best attempts of the day. Most of the attempts, I was barely grabbing it, but that's not even where I started. That was just the first video I made recording starting to document my journey. But before that, high school, 18 years old, 17 years old, can't remember now, couldn't even touch the rim and I was trying, trying, trying and this is where I want you guys to start. I want you guys to have clear goals and I want you to focus on the first goal at hand. Whether you can't touch the rim at all, your first goal is to touch the rim. We're gonna get into goals in a second, but let me go back to my story. So, five foot 10, hasn't changed in 10 years. 91 inch standing reach. Whatever you wanna say, that's a good reach, it's a bad, doesn't matter. People are dunking at five, five, there's, just listen. Be the first at your height, be the first with your ethnicity, be the first with the resources you have. You can do it, no more excuses. This video is going to eliminate all excuses and show you what's possible. So, back to me, okay. 5'10", couldn't touch the rim, touch, jump, 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 finally touched the rim. By the way, you don't need any equipment, you don't need any strength training. If you're trying to get your first dunk, I believe you can get a 40 inch vertical. I have a whole video on that. By the way, search any topic dunk jump related with my name, Steven Selly, and you will find it on YouTube. I have a whole college. Back to me. High school, skimmed the rim off one foot for the first time and I touched it. Then I thought to myself, I want to hang on the rim. This is why it's a goal for you. So the next goal is hanging on the rim. Hang on the rim with one hand. Be careful. I was jumping off one foot. Then I switched to two feet. But just make that your next goal to just simply try to grab it. I even might even go between that. Just trying to grab the rim. Once you're comfortable, hang on the rim. That goal for me was a dream in itself to think 5'10 Jewish white kid could hang on the same rim that pro NBA players play on and dunk on was a dream, was really a mind altering experience. Did that, broke my ankle, took me three months to recover, got back, couldn't do it again, retrained, got it again. So that proved to me, okay, it wasn't a fluke that I could grab the rim, it's trainable. That was one of my first shifts. Then, I wanted to hang with two hands. Try, try, try. Again, these are, from here on off, these are all videos on my YouTube channel. Just go in reverse order or uh, go back to the first ones. You know how to, how internet works. And uh, hung with two hands, okay? Hung with two hands. I'm switching up my technique. I don't know what I'm doing. That's one of my biggest mistakes, number one. Patience. Work on your technique. Work on a healthy body. Those are your commitments to yourself. Patience health first because you don't want to just dunk once you don't want to dunk once and then have to deal with an injury and go backwards you want to slowly build up so you never have to make go backwards and you can uh, consistently make progress and i have a whole video on this as well raise your ceiling you don't want to just touch the ceiling you want to raise your foundation so your ceiling continues to grow and expand beautiful Okay, hung with two hands, trying lobs, couldn't even dunk a small ball, started to learn lobs, and got my first dunk. It was my first dunk, I have a whole video on that as well, because it was my first dunk, it was a low rim, nobody knew about that at the time, but to me, it was my first dunk, it was in a gym, I had no idea it was a couple inches low, which makes a huge difference, which you guys know that. And it was so mind-shifting because I dunked a basketball. It doesn't matter if it was a couple inches low because in my head, I just dunked on a legit rim. So for you guys, because you know this, and because it's been 10 years since that, that moment, by the way, coming up on my anniversary is my real first 10 foot dunk like next month. So I'm really excited about that. I was 19. I'm 29 now. Just getting started, bro. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah. Pro tip, measure every rim because every fraction of an inch counts. And you just want to be honest with yourself. You don't want to just find a rim. Ooh, this one I'm really good on for some reason. It's two inches low. Every inch makes a huge difference. And we just want to push ourselves to the limit. That's what this whole video is about. That's what this journey is about. So 
got my first dunk, kept training, kept learning about lobs, kept learning about technique, and then I led to places where I got pit plateaus, and I was jumping too much over training, and now I want to get into my training philosophy after 10 years of training and my entire strategy to help you become the best athlete you could possibly be, let alone the best dunker. So in conclusion, couldn't even touch the rim. Now I've touched 11 foot 1.5, I believe measured on a Vertec. That is a a 42.5 inch vertical. And I believe I've touched higher after that, but I didn't officially measure it. So my vertical is around 42 to 43. If I couldn't touch the rim, that's at most 28 inches. That's where I got the 14 inch inch vertical. Reach hasn't changed. My channel might have wrong measurements here and there, but I'm learning and I'm trying my best every single time. But those are the facts. You can do that if you can genetic. You can say genetics. My favorite thing is people said when I first said I was going to dunk 10 years ago, no one said I could because I was the shortest one out out of all my friends. So basically, my genetics would hold me back from being a dunker. Now I dunk and I've increased and I hop so high, hop so high. Who says that? I jump so high that they say, oh, you must have good genetics. We've come full circle, folks. So they're let them talk. That's a whole nother bonus excuse is let them talk, doubt everything, just never doubt yourself. Believe in yourself because if you truly do, I believe you can do anything. So I'm in the best physique of my life, the leanness, and that came from all this this philosophy, so let's get into this philosophy. All right, so my training philosophy, I don't have a schedule of workouts I do. I go based on my daily feeling and what my body needs. Simply put, this is why I believe dunking is possible for anyone and why I believe we're limitless. Besides the spirituality aspect, which I'll get into, jumping is simply just force output. It's just how much force you can apply to the ground, right? How how much force and how fast you can apply that force. So those are your two things you want to do. You want to apply more force by getting stronger and you want to do it faster by doing speed work. Now, where do you start? Anybody watching this video that hasn't dunked yet, you don't even need to worry about that. That is just to show you that that formula is endless. If you can continue to get stronger and continue to get faster, you can do it. Why would there be a genetic potential on your body? It's not. It's just that your body, and this is training, back to training. Training whether it's growing muscle, strengthening muscle, getting faster, your body is an amazing vessel that responds to the stimulus you give it. So no matter what you're trying to do, a lot of times when we hit plateaus, it's because our body gets too good at what we're giving it that it's not responsive and it's it's not adapting in the way that we're trying to make it adapt. So our job as a human connected to our bodies, is to figure out how to give the right stimulus to get our bodies to respond. That's my training philosophy. Now, the reason why I say I don't have a structure is because every single day has so many variables, and let's get into them. This is what I call the energy foundations. I have a course that has these three foundations, and you can get all the courses in one. And it's it's a sleep, nutrition, and body awareness. So body awareness goes back to that art of understanding the stimulus you're giving your body to respond. So if I say, I wanna grow this muscle, which I'm pointing to my bicep, if you're listening to it, why would you, you're not listening to it, you're watching this. Um, you have to lift a certain way, right? But a number of reps is not gonna do it. A number, uh, a speed is not gonna do it or something that someone else is doing. You have to feel that muscle and do that. Yes, the reps will help you do that. And that is, I'm gonna get into that with my strategy, how to use the tracking and the measurements to build this intuition. But every single day is different. If you woke up and you had a great sleep and you had great nutrition the day before and your body is fresh because you did some good stretches and you had good body awareness the day before, now you're gonna feel fantastic like I do today. Now, if you flip that, if you had stress or your girlfriend calls you and you you can't sleep because you're heartbroken and then you wake up and then your bills aren't paid and all these different stressors, you think you're going to have the same amount of energy to run through a wall and explode at your hardest? It just simply doesn't make sense. So you need to play off that. And of course, there's a balance. That's where the art comes. That's why I believe training is an art. And that's why I have this philosophy, because when you're going to the gym, some days you're super motivated and you're ready to push yourself to that limit to get to that next level. 
Other days you don't feel it, but your body's ready to do it. So you can push yourself to that level. And then lastly, other days you're not feeling it and you go to do it and you, and you almost make it worse, right? So how do you distinguish that? That is what I want to teach you. And that is what my energy foundations courses are all about. Mastering your sleep so you can get the best sleep you can every single day. Nutrition so you can be the best athlete you can be. Giving yourself the best food, the fuel, the recovery, recover faster and perform at your best and lastly the body awareness understanding what your body needs and being able to listen to give it what it needs every single day and that leads me to the next portion the strategy of actually jumping so there's three parts so the first part is the actual training the second part is tracking that training and the third part is learning building awareness every single day so this is the strategy for anybody and going forward and what i still use today so of course, at first, you gotta do the work. A lot of people search, what's the workout? Which workout should I start? Which, do I do strength? Do I do speed? How do I jump correctly? All the information's out there. First of all, my whole YouTube, like I've said, is a freaking jump college from technique to understanding this body awareness. I have courses on that, but also videos on that as well. The mindset from one foot, two foot, how to throw a lob, all these different techniques of simply dunking, but then also training from squatting to Nordic curls, everything. So the information's out there, but with all that out there all the way, you can also get started doing it. And that is a huge part. So if you're watching this video, you can't even touch the rim or maybe you're close and you're grabbing the rim. Start jumping. And by jumping, I want you to do it with this in mind. I want you to do it with correct technique. You can watch videos on that right now, right after this video, but also record yourself. But I simply want you to be mindful every jump. Try to think about yourself. How are you feeling in that moment? But you don't need to record it then. Just be mindful so you can remember it later, but just think about how am I feeling right now? Am I feeling explosive? Are doubts coming in my head? Am I feeling motivated? Am I feeling inspired? Am I doing it for because this person's watching? All of that matters because that's going to affect your energy and your path of your purpose in life. What? We're getting deep. You'll ex I'll explain. Now, when it comes to this jumping, I don't want you to be like, just jump, 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 jump as much as you possibly can. I want you to do it as just your workout. Now, I would start with once one big jump day a week, then another day where you kind of feel out your body and have a play day, I call it, where you warm up and start jumping and see how you feel. And then other days where you just do very little technique work. That is the most basic little structure I can give you and I want you to do it that way to think of it super, super gradual so you can make progress every single time and not just overdo it and just push yourself too hard right from the jump. And then the other key of that training is make your rest and recovery equal or even more important than your training. I want your recovery days to be training days. I want you to go foam roll. So here's some tips on those days. I call them body love days. After a jump day, the next day, do some foam rolling. Do Go for a brisk walk. Do some stretching. Feel out every nook and cranny of your body for two reasons. One, it's gonna bring blood flow to all those parts you just use. Our upper body, we use a lot. So when we're sore, we're, we get blood flow into those areas so they heal and recover properly. But a lot of times our legs, we don't think about it, so we're sitting on them and we're, we're not moving in all the ranges of motion, so they're not recovering as fast as they could and they're not developing the right fluidity throughout the muscles, which I've done incorrectly my life, in my life, so I want you guys to avoid that. So have a lot of body love days where you just listen to your body and feel it, and that way, if you have that balance where you're jumping one day and doing your body love recovery days and they're balanced, then every day you're either making progress like tangibly where you're actually doing the work or making progress where you're recovering and repairing faster and learning about what you just did with that day. That is one of the biggest mistakes I made. I only focused on the work, but if you focus on the repair aspect as well, you're gonna learn from every session and then you're gonna be able to plan the next session. So it's a consistent cycle where the work feeds into the recovery and the recovery feeds into the work. You can't have one without the other and you can't master just the work without mastering during the recovery, and that is a huge key. Okay, so now you know to start jumping. I want you to start jumping, so now these are the things I want you to track from the beginning. Whether you're trying to dunk or just become a great athlete, focus on your technique, focus on your form, whether it's lifting, whether it's jumping, but if we're talking about jumping, 
focus on your technique, record yourself and try to master technique as your priority to begin with. Now, I would love for you to track the energy foundations every single day. Just simply track how you slept. You could give it a rating, good, medium, poor, and you can get, you track your nutrition. Start trying to eat a little healthy if you have no diet at all. By the way, I have these courses, so go through them. They're cheap, they're inexpensive, and you can watch all the videos in one day and take notes and get all the information you need in these areas. And then I want you to track your body awareness, simply an energy rating. Did you feel like your body was firing, right? Like you're you're ready to run or do you feel like you're a little lazy that day? Just simply those few things will build so much awareness, which leads me to the last point. So now you put the work in, you did the recovery days, you're tracking your technique, you're tracking what you do. Again, track what you do as well. Of course, I think that was kind of implied, right? Track how many times you jump, track your weight, track all the stats you can because all that data and all the work and recovery is going to lead to this holistic view of your training and your intuition of what you should do the next day. So say a week goes by, you did that for a week, you trained, you recovered, you tracked your sleep, you tracked your nutrition, you tracked your weight, you tracked your energy levels of your motivation and flow, flow with life, right? Then when Monday rolls around, and you have all that data, you'll be like, wow, I have all of this, this huge picture of myself and what I need tomorrow. How the heck is that going to match what I'm going to do? Especially of because we're so different in our uh, careers as athletes, but also just your body composition is way different than someone else. Your life is way different than someone else. Maybe that week was the greatest week of your life and you're freaking more motivated than ever and you had more free time, you took a vacation, who knows? But compared to another week where maybe you got in a freaking car accident, God forbid, but something happened like that, a pet died in your family and there's just stress. You have one body and that body takes on the stress of everything you do. So your training has to reflect that and I'm a big believer in that and it's changed my life completely. And I know they didn't really sound like much of training, so I'm going to give you a little bit more here. When you train, just jump at the rim and do all these different things from short approach to full approach to different plants. Meaning if you jump off two feet, try left, right, try right, left, off one foot, try left foot, try right foot. Then try from a standstill, try from a short approach where you're taking one step and try from a full approach. Try all those things. Again, this is the mistake I made. I just was doing full approach one way. So I got really good at that, but I was not good at the other ones, which one made me not good at dribble dunks or not good at certain drop step dunks, which I want to do because I want to dunk in game. But it also made my body imbalanced because I was only jumping one way. It's almost like just lifting one muscle group of your upper body the whole time all you do is chest 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 just says you got tiny arms and just all of them balance you need a full body balance for you to be the best athlete you could possibly be so just start jumping and it really is that simple the reason I didn't put that much emphasis on what you're actually doing with the jumping is because all the other things are more important and as you do it you will start to notice okay I don't I feel like this or some days I feel like this and when you do that and you build that intuition you're gonna be like okay Every day I go to jump, I, I warm up and I feel better after I jump or I, when I jump this way, I feel like this. Then you're going to under you're going to have questions. And when you start answering those questions, you are going to be the best trainer for yourself and train the best way for you that you can. And yes, the details matter. But right now, if you're trying to train and build a b bigger upper body, right, you're going to start lifting weights. And if you try and you're not growing, you're going to be like, OK, what stimulates muscle growth? That question is just what's, what's on your mind. And there's videos. There's tons of information out there. So when you're jumping and you start to make progress and you grab the rim and then you're grabbing the rim and you're maybe you're plateauing because all you can do is grab. Maybe it's like, okay, what am I doing? Once you hit plateaus and you're going to hit plateaus and that's fine. Don't give up. The, the key is pushing yourself harder, but really learning all these things so you can have all the factors to play with. Okay. Maybe I need to push a little harder. Maybe I need to sleep a little more. Maybe I need to just eat a little better. How do you feel outside of the court? Because that way, every time you work out, you have max energy. You know, it's not your energy. You know that you're able to push yourself and you know you have the fuel to do so. And I guarantee you, if you do this and you can't even touch the rim, you can do this method 
to grab rim, grab rim with two hands, and then get close to lobs, and then start dunking. This is all you need. If your technique is right, your energy is right, and you're healing your body properly, and you're pain-free, you're going to make progress because you're going to be pushing yourself. That is the key as well. You have to push yourself. So you have to push to reach to a new height. That might be the hardest part about training because people think there's something else they do to jump higher, but just like running, a great analogy is running a 40-yard dash. Say you run it in five seconds, and you want to shave off a tenth of a second no matter what you do at some point you have to run faster than you've ever run so you have to push yourself i said in one of my bigger videos it says the 101 percent rule so when you jump you have to think i'm trying to jump higher and other days you may have that energy to do so but you have to give it a hundred percent so if you're doing that consistently and you're giving your recovery a hundred percent and every time you have a max jump day you're having a hundred percent effort you're going to make progress Give it time, be patient, let your body heal and make health your priority and you will make progress. So now some of the bigger questions and some of the biggest blocks that I see. This one is big is do you truly believe you can dunk? Because a lot of times when you say, I think I can, but I'm looking for this, you don't actually believe it. And the, the problem with that is you're not allowing yourself to push yourself to the hardest and you're not allowing yourself to continue to work. Because a lot of times if we, we don't get the results in a couple weeks, you're like, I don't think it's possible and we stop. So a lot of times we give up or we stop something because we lose the faith that it's possible. And that might be the biggest question of it all. Do you truly believe, can you truly see yourself when you close your eyes dunking that basketball? If yes, then it may lead to the next question, but either way, now you're going to do it. I 100% believe you can do it. Now the next question that may come up is, the rush. What is the rush? Why do you want to do it now? Why do you want to do it in two weeks? Why do you want to find this thing? Maybe you're in high school and you want to dunk in games and you want to do it before you graduate college or maybe because you said something. But if there was no rush and you knew this was possible, you could be more patient so your body could adapt properly and you could build this foundation where you could be this insane athlete instead of trying to rush. For example, you jump. You don't spend the time recovering, so you jump again. You don't spend the time recovering. You try to work out. Now, now, a week goes by or two weeks go by or months go by and you train, train, train so much, but you have all these different aches and pains or imbalances. You have no idea which one to address first. And that is the problem when you're rushing. So ask yourself, what is the rush? Why can't you be patient? Because greatness takes time. And the more patient you can be, the more solid foundation you could build and the more you raise your ceiling and your floor, your floor that you stand on, your foundation, your ceiling's expansive. And lastly, does this inspire you? My life is about doing things that inspire me. I truly believe when you're living inspired, you're living in spirit, which is your purpose. In spirit is your connection to your higher self, connection to God. And when you do that, you're living your purpose. So whether it seems like it's just dunking for fun, if it inspires you and it's pushing you to your higher self, that's going to lead to everything you do in every aspect of your life to be your higher self. And it's a great way to illuminate your mind, illuminate those doubts if you believe yourself, illuminate what you truly love to do. Maybe you love dunking because of the expression. Maybe you love dunking because of the challenge. Maybe you love dunking because of the dream. Whatever it is, if it inspires you, I wholeheartedly believe it's your purpose in life to pursue it. Dunking your not. I'm just saying the inspiration of whatever you're chasing, that is your purpose. And it will make sense. I love Steve Jobs quotes. You can only connect the dots looking backwards. And when I look at my life right now, I'm a creative director. I help people express themselves. I make these videos. I make music. All those things came from me doing things that I enjoy. And now I'm making a life of, of that, doing those things. But if I, if I try, if I got blocked by saying, how is that going to be a career or make money? All those different things, I would have never pursued them. So you have to pursue them for, for the joy of them and you will watch it unfold in the future. That is my goal for you. I hope you feel inspired. Now, this meant a lot to me. Share it build this journey with a friend. Life is better shared. And I just want you to really believe in yourself and take this information and apply it and take action and try it. The attempt is going to teach you so much. I guarantee you, whether you learn about yourself and this is not for you, dunking specifically, or you find another endeavor, you will be on the path that will be a more fulfilling life, a more free life. And that is what I want for you. So 
that's it. I don't know. We got super deep, but that's what I love. So have a great freaking Sunday. Enjoy. I love you. Take it easy. I wake up in the morning feeling grateful, feeling blessed. Never stressed. I'm aligning with my best. Nothing less. Energy is fresh. Universe, my friend. Even after death, I'm inhaling peace. Exhaling love with every breath. Ha. Gratitude, you know that's the key. Attract that which I'm in harmony. Some days they'll be going my way, but they can unfold even better than you plan to see. I got too much on my mind sometimes with thoughts of suicide. So I sit until it's quiet. Now I'm synced up with divine. Boy, I'm back. Back in my essence, back like I never had left it. I don't have to look, I just had to remember. I'm looking at you and I see a reflection. I'm sending you love. I love you, my friend. Hope you enjoying this day. Amen when I pray. Thank you, God. Time to go soak up the rays.